a professor. Are you sharing your screen or? Oh, no, just for me. I don't want you guys to see it. <laughs> Good point. Well, let's talk about sine, cosine, loss. And then a little bit of how to get components in 2D, how to get components in 3D. Once you have your components, then you do summation of forces in the X direction equals to zero in summation of forces in the Y direction equal to zero for equilibrium problems, right? And then you do the same, but in, in three axes because in 3D you have three axes, but it's exactly the same. for equilibrium problems, right? That's it, that's all, that's all there is. Um, people ask me if they can have cheating cheat, no cheating cheat, because what you need to know for this, for this evaluation is, is a stuff that you, is, is actually very simple stuff. And you have to have it in, in, in by heart in your head because this is, very basic stuff that an engineer has to have in his head forever. It's like use of cosine and use of sine to get rectangular components. You have to know that by heart. And I don't know what you would put in a cheating cheat. This. You don't have to put this on the cheating cheat. You have to know it by heart sine and cosine and also tangent, right? Tangent of alpha equals over the, yeah. If you need to put this in a cheating sheet, you are in trouble. You need to know that perfectly well right now at this point. Something that is very basic for an engineer. Uh, <coughs> science and, let's go, let's go now with a little more details like science and cosine loss. But there is no, the other, the other stuff that you need to know here is just to, to use your, 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 think, your thinking capacity to, to see the angles, to get what angle is what, but it's not like a formula. Let's, let's go, let's go for the sine and cosine, so we we'll see. So you have to remember that sine and cosine laws are just, uh, a couple of formulas that allow you to find elements of a triangle when you don't have all of them. Let's say in this, you have this triangle. So for example, you can find, you can find A when you have B and C and an alpha, right? A squared equals B squared this is too big. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus two B C. Cosine of what angle? Right, I put it there, alpha, right? That's it. You have to be careful that, just, just be careful that the angle that you have to put in here is the angle in front of the side that you are trying to find here. So if you are trying to find A, you need to use alpha. But let's say you are trying to find B, then you do B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus two A B. Cosine of what angle? Beta, right? Because it's the one that is in front of B, right? Yep. Oh, yes. Question? Oh, no, no, I was just agreeing with you. Yes, and that's it. That's it with that one. I, I'm not going to do the C because it's the same thing. Now, the science law, science law, very simple law. The sign of an angle is to the length of the side that is in front of that angle as, as, as for all the sides. Now you have here the side A over the sign of the angle that is in front of it. This is A, so this is the angle that is in front of A, is equal to B divided by the sine of the angle that is in front of that B, and C divided is to the sine of the angle that is in and, and you can do this upside down too, sine alpha over A equals to sine beta over B equals to 
Sangama will see. Doesn't matter, right? Uh, professor? Yes? For the uh, second equation, B squared, shouldn't it be two times AC, not AB? Of, of course, of course, of course. Because you are trying to find B, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, great. Oh, that's a very good way to get you guys to speak, make mistakes. I'm going to make several mistakes today. Oh, good idea. No question about this, right? The problem here, usually for students, is that you guys forget this minus sign many times, many times. Don't forget the minus sign. Other than that, it's just putting these numbers in your calculator. Don't forget the minus. Another thing that is a little bit troublesome for you guys is to, to get the triangle from, out from the forces, right? So let's say, for example, that you have a problem like, okay? So how do you do the triangle? Well, you have to, if they are asking you for the resultant of those two forces, let's say they, have, they are asking for the resultant and the angle with P. What angle the resultant makes with P? So you have to create the triangle. You have to do that diagram in your, in your paper because it's the basis for your equations. You can use the method of the triangle or the method of the parallelogram, which are basically the same, but be careful. You have to put the forces in your diagram, exactly the same forces that you have in the, in the problem statement, the same direction. So it will be better. In, in my case, I use a parallel here with my ruler. So I say this is, this is parallel here. And then I put my, my force here and, and, and I try to use a scale either using the squares on your paper or, or a ruler. If you take a ruler to the exam, it will be great. So you do here like <clears throat> one, two, three. So that will be my three force, three. And then, and then I do another one. If you have a circular protractor, it will be great. I'm going to do just by, by eye here. <clears throat> So then I do the other force has to be parallel. Assuming, assuming that the problem statement is well done, but you can verify that with your, with your ruler. For example, if it says that this is 150, but the problem statement might not be perfect. Maybe, maybe I did it really quickly and I didn't pay attention of the angles. So let's, let's verify this. This is 36 degrees. This is 36. So if I want to put this here at 150, so this angle, this angle will be 90. So all this angle will be 126. So in order to get to 150, I need 24 more, 24 more minus 90 minus 24 is how much? 66. 66. So this should be the angle for 150. See my, my diagram here, since I do it by hand just like that, it's not going to be 150 exact, but in when I do my diagram, if I have a circular protractor or I have this tool so nice here, I'll do it nicely, I'll do it correctly. So this will be one, two, three, four. You see my ruler, right? So this is the other force. Okay. And this angle is 150. Now you do your triangle or your rectangle. Let's do the triangle. In the, in the triangle method, you draw one force and then the other. Actually, I should draw this one first and then I have to put this one next to that one, like over here. Let's, let's do it. So it will be another force parallel to that one and with a length of four units. So it will be this over here. <clears throat> one, two, three, four. All right. Okay. So that will be the method of the triangle. The resultant will be the force that goes from the tail of the first force to the head of the last force. It will be this, this one right here. That one will be your resultant. This will be your resultant. 
and there you have your 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 triangle this is all this is four here so you apply your cosine law r squared equals to three squared plus four squared minus two times three times four. Oh, oh no yeah i am i am sharing this with you right cosine of one angle well this angle here let's call it alpha what is that alpha so that's what usually give us give you guys some trouble how do we get that alpha and you have to do it the, the way that is more this is like easier for you what i in this because every case is different sometimes they give you different angles here i will continue this line like this and then this 150 is the same as this 150 so then alpha will be 180 minus 150 that's the way i will do this one so this alpha will be 30 right be careful with those now that you have the 150 okay you finish your equation 150 here and then you do um, maybe you can remove the square on this side and put the square root here and then you have your your resultant right and say in this case they ask you for the angle that the force makes with the p force this is the p force here p equals three so they are asking you for this angle here uh, professor, yes? the, um, cosine 30. Sorry? Uh, the result yeah. change cosine great, 30. Great, great. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to keep making mistakes because then you guys talk. I love to hear you guys. 30 right here, right? That's what you mean? Yeah. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Now, they are asking you for this angle right there. Well, that one is kind of easy because just use... Uh, Science, right? Let's call this one beta. Science law. You can say sine of beta divided by uh, divided by four as sine of alpha, which is steady, divided by r. And you already have r here, and and alpha is steady. So from here you get beta. Okay, this one is done. Let's say that, for example, they give us. Um, a problem oriented with respect to the axis. In that case, they can ask, what is the, 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 the direction of the resultant with respect to the x-axis? So let's say we have, for example, um, okay, this is the x-axis. And let's say we have one fourth that goes um let's see one for that goes in this direction 10 degrees 15 degrees here 15 degrees i'm gonna put it we have a force of three uh at 15 degrees this is p at 15 degrees and let's say they have another force another force of let's say something like this a uh, force of uh, five or the same four one two three four one two three four yeah four so it was gonna be too big um, a 45 degrees so let's say that one is 45 degrees. So this one is 15 degrees. And this is 45 degrees here. And then they ask, what is the resultant? And what is the angle that this resultant makes with respect to the X positive, for example? So then you do your triangle or your parallelogram. Let's do the parallelogram this time. Last time we did the triangle. Let's do the parallelogram. For the parallelogram, you just have to draw parallel to the vectors from the head of the other vector. So this is, so I put a parallel on the head of the other one. A parallel. And then a parallel to the other vector 
on the head of the other vector. And, and then you draw your resultant from the, the tail of the vectors to the place where the parallels meet. So that will be this vector like this, right? So that will be your resultant R. And this is, let's say this is Q equals to four. If you do with, with care and, and, and uh, with a ruler and, and uh, with a scale, you can always read the result here. And it should be similar to what you should get on the calculation. You should get here one, two, three, 300, uh, 3.6. Let's put it over here, 3.6. Okay, so now, uh, do, so if we need to find R, so here we will do, if this is four, this is three, then this is three also, and this is four also, I put it right there. So I, 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 I have it on, on hand to my calculations. It will be a square root of four square plus three square minus four times, oh, minus two, minus two times four times three, cosine of what angle? That's the problem. The angle would be this one right here, alpha. How do we get that alpha? Okay, what a problem. No, 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 not too much of a problem. There is always a way, try to not to get too confused. I will put a, an auxiliary line here on an horizontal axis. Since those vectors are oriented with respect to the x-axis, it's kind of easier because you draw a, an x-axis here and then you see that um, this, the angle of the three fourths with respect to horizontal is 15, so this is 15, right? And then this, this line is parallel to this line because they are x-axis and the vector is just a diagonal to, to those two lines that are parallel. So then this angle is also 45 as this one that is here, 45. So then alpha is equal to 45 plus 15, 60. 60, 60 degrees, right? Did I do it correctly? Somebody correct me if I did it wrong. Somebody did this operation to see if we get something close to 3.6. I'm dying to see it. 16 plus nine minus two times four times three times cosine 60. 13, the square root of 3.6, ha! Ha! Huh? How about that? 3.6. That's what you have to do. And do a diagram of, of good size. Do a diagram with good size, with the ni nice, clean like this, so I can see what you're doing. Okay, now they asking for what is the angle that R makes with, res with respect to the X axis? So that angle will be this angle here. Let's call it there. So how do we find that? Okay, we can we can find, for example, this this axis, and we add fifteen, right? Uh, I mean this angle, right? Let's call it this one beta. That angle is one is the is the the angle that is in front of the four. So we can see it in the other triangle because this is the four, so it's the same as this one. This is also beta, right? So I can say sine of beta divided by four equals to, for example, the R, I already have the R, and the R is in front of the 60 degree. So sine of 60 divided by R, and then from here I can get beta, right? And then I get theta equals to 15 plus beta. All right, ready, signs, uh, signs, ready, signs and cosines, laws. I can't think of any other way to, that you will receive that information about the angles and stuff, but you, you just have to be careful, look there to your diagram. If you, you have to do your diagram, diagram very nicely, so you see the angles easier. If your diagram is really crooked, not really well done, you get mixed up with all the angles and, and you make a mistake. You are more, more, uh, you are more prone to get mistakes. 
your, if your diagram is not nice. Okay, we have to run because we don't have much time. Let's go to rectangular components in 2D. Let's see, so you have X axis, you have Y axis, and then you have, let's say you have a couple of forces and they want to ask you what is the resultant of the forces. So you have, let's say you have one force here, and you have another force here. It's, it's difficult to make a, a difficult problem in this because it's, it's kind of very simple. This is P, let's say this is um, five pounds or whatever, and this is Q, which is four pounds or whatever. And then this, this angle is uh, 62 degrees, and this angle is 50 degrees. What is the resultant? And what is the angle, the orientation of that resultant? Um, so you have to get to, to decompose these forces in the, in the vertical and horizontal components to do that by drawing parallels to the axis. When you, are, when, when you try to get components, you have to draw parallels to the directions from the head of the vector, and then those shows the components on the axis. So this will be Px. Let me put it in a different color here. And this is Py. And then this is the parallel to the x-axis on the tip of Q and the parallel to the y-axis on the tip of Q. So that generates your component this component, Qx, and this component, Qy, right? Now you have to be careful that you don't always use sine for y or cosine for x. That's not, that's not always the case. Depends on what angle you have. For example, here, Px is equals to P sine 62, right? And Py is P cosine 62. Now Qy, Qy is Q uh, sine 50, right? And Qx is equal to Q cosine 50, right? And that's how you get the composition in rectangular components. There is no much to it. That's it. So if you got, if you want need to get the resultant, you get first, you get the, comp the components of the resultant. That will be Rx will be the summation of all the forces in the X direction. So that will be equal to, in this case, Px plus Qx. And, and Ry will be the summation of the Y components. So it will be Py plus Qy. So in this case will be uh, Px will be five sine 62. Ahora, now be very careful that the Qx is going in the negative x, right? So you have to put this minus sign yourself very careful for cosine of 50. And this one will be Py, Py is P cosine 62, which is five cosine 62. And, and QY is Q sine, is positive also, Q for sine 50. Whatever that number gives you. Uh, I'm not gonna do the, the calculation because we just have to cover all the matter in this in this short time. So let's say this gives you let's say let's you know let's do it real like that. So it will be something like this. So it's gonna be like this. So for sure you have something like Rx is going to give you something like 1.9 um, pounds or whatever it is, and then y is going to be like four. Um, it's going to be something like this, 5.2 pounds. Let's say, let's, let's, let's say that that's what you got if you do all those operations. So now you get the resultant at a square root of 1.9 square 
plus 5.2 square, right? Let's do that, that one really quick. 30.65 square root of that equals 5.5. 5. 5362, 5362 pounds. That's the magnitude. Now, the angle, alpha, what is the orientation of this force? So it's very good idea in these cases to make another set of axes here to draw the resultant. So you have the axis here, and then you know that the Rx is 1.9, so you put here 1.9, Rx and 5.2 going up, 5, Ry, 5.2, Rx, 1.9. And then you draw the resultant, which is the resultant equal to 5.54 pounds. And this is the angle alpha, which will be tangent minus one of 5.2 over 1.9. You, that will be equal to our tangent of 5.2 divided by 1.9, 69.9, 9. 69 degrees, so 69.9. And if you want to put this on a, on a little box, that will be 5.54 pounds, alpha equals 69.9 degrees and you make like a little a little diagram like this so so the person that is looking at your result understand very well what you're doing right now if this is a problem of equilibrium then p and q will be unknown you, you, you don't have this value you don't have this value you have everything as a function of p and q you will have instead of instead of um, five, you will have here p. Instead of four, you will have here q, right? And you don't have this. You don't have this. And you probably have another another. Um, let's remove all this stuff. You will have another entity here. Move that away. So you will have, for example, that there is uh, something hanging here. Put in a different color. You have a weight hanging here. That will you, a weight of 100 pounds hanging in there. And they are asking you, what is the force on the cables P and Q? in order to, ha to have this, this uh, W force in equilibrium there. So then you will have another force W that has, what, comp what are the components of W? There is no component in the X direction in this case. There is only component in the Y direction that would be 100 going down, right? So then you do summation of forces in the X direction equals to zero for equilibrium for equilibrium, you will have summation of forces in the X direction equal to zero, and then you will have this. This is the summation of forces in the X direction, right? Ah. And you set that equal to zero. You said this is equal to zero. Summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. So you have your summation of forces in the y direction is this. Sorry, is this. Those are, you add all the forces in the y direction. Um, the components in the y direction is, but now there is another force in the y direction, this one. So that one is going down. So that one is going minus 100 because it's going down equals to zero. So you have two equations with two unknowns. You just solve this system. It's a system of two by two. But you know that the algebra to solve that, right? You say solve for P in this one and then put that value here. 
and then you solve for Q here, and then you replace on the original to get the Q. All right. Okay, now 3D, same thing, but in 3D is a little more uh, involved because you have three axes, and then basically the problem starts that you need to decompose the forces in the three directions. So you have different cases. You have the case where they give you the angles, they have the case where they give you the coordinates of points. So, and so you have to be able to extract the components of a force based on what you have. Let's say, for example, that you have X, Y, Z. And be careful which one is which, because sometimes uh, the, the problems go a little weird with the axis and not exactly the way that you usually see it, but it doesn't matter. And let's say that you have one fourth. Let's say that the force is this one right here. And let's say that that force uh try to make a okay let's let's put some uh, some lines here to orientate this let's say this is uh it's coming like over here this is coming like over here let's put it black so then this um, that gives you the orientation of that force, so you know where it's going in 3D. Let me put this axis a little longer here, right? So I have to put, everything is based on parallels, right? Everything is based on parallels. So there will be another line here. There will be another line parallel to that one over here. And then another horizontal line here. Let's do the vertical here very first. I hope I am sharing my screen. I'm just talking and talking and no, you're not sharing anything. Oh yeah, it's showing. All right. Then after I finish, we didn't see anything. <laughs> One time happened to me in a class after a long time. Are you showing something? Now you tell me. And then another parallel to see, and that should give me the vertical line here. Okay. You see it in 3D? Yeah. Okay. So this angle will be, let's, let's put it easy here. We can have, let's say we have this angle here, uh, theta x. And you have... Uh, let's say you have this angle here, uh, that will be theta c, right? And let's say we have theta x equals to, uh, it's difficult to say what is the angle there because in 3D, because of the perspective, you don't know, you just can put some value there, let's say 65 degrees. And theta c, uh, let's say that one is um, 60 degrees. If you don't have here theta y, you can get it with this expression, cosine squared theta x plus cosine squared theta y plus cosine squared theta z equals to one. This is a very important equation to know. It's based on the fact that the components of any force, if we are talking about, about force f here, f, a square is equal to fx square plus fy square plus fc square. It's, it's based on this fact, right? When you express this as f equals f times lambda f, then you come to this conclusion. I'm not going to do the development here. It's in the, it's in the video, right? But if you learn, if you learn, this could be useful if you have it by heart. It can give you out of trouble. If you don't remember this, you for sure have to remember this. This is the Pythagorean theorem in 3D, right? Okay, if you have, and then this, how you can find, that in this case, what, is, what would that be? So this will be that cosine, a square of theta c is equal to one minus cosine square 65 minus cosine square 60. 
Let's see what we get here. One minus cosine, cosine 65 square minus cosine 60 square equals cos, ah, cosine square of theta c equals 0.571. Thirty-nine. Then cosine theta c equals square root of that square root of this equals uh, point seventy-five five nine one. And then from here you can get that theta c is the arcosine of this arcosine of answer equals forty point forty point nine degrees. Well, actually, a five significant digits because you're gonna need this number to actually you're gonna need this number to get the components because the purpose of this was to get the components. So you have here f x equals to f. F should have a value here. If it's a problem where they are asking you what are the components of uh, force f, so this is um, f equals whatever, 500 Newtons. So here you have Fx equals to 500 cosine theta x, which is 65. Fy will be 500 cosine 60. And Fz equals 500 cosine 40.895. Five. But here you have to be very careful because the component, let's put the component here. You have here the Fx is this one. Fy is this one. And Fc is this one, right? Fx is in the negative direction, right? So you have to be very careful to put here a minus sign here, right? And whatever number that you have here, this is the solution for those three equations, right? You got this, um, which one we got? Z, C, uh, actually, which one is the negative? The X. If, if you found this, or oh, you have this X angle 65, if you work with this angle, which is 180 minus 65, 115 you can do directly without the the without the manual without the manual sign here because this is equal if you do 500 cosine 55 500 cosine 65 is equal to 211 this is 211 but if you do 500 cosine of 115. If you do that, what do you get? Anybody can do it? 500 cosine of 115. You get minus 211. The, the minus is automatic when you measure the angle from the X positive. But if you don't measure from the X positive, but from the axis that is closer to the uh, to the force, like here, then you have to be careful to put the sign manually, all right? And the sign is super important when you are doing equations of equilibrium. The sign has to be included in the equations, otherwise you just get garbage. Okay, this is an easy case where you are given a couple of angles and you need the other one. The other case that you might encounter is when they, they don't give you those angles, but let's say that they give you, let's say that they give you this value, let's say 40 degrees, and they show you a projection on the base that sometimes happens. They give you this, this projection, and they say that this angle is, 50 degrees. So when you get that, you have basically the 40 is directly theta, theta y, right? So you can get f y by f 
cosine of theta y. Now you need to get fx that is going to be this and fz, which is this one, right? So you have to do work with this. Let's put it here like in, in purple. This is a component of the fourth f that is not x, nor y, nor c, none of them. It's, it's a, a, like a temporary component in the plane. It is like the projection of the force of 500 on the plane xz that you can get it based on the 40 degree angle that I just erased. Um, and this we usually call it F prime. When F prime in this case will be 500 sine of 40, right? That will be the F prime. Now, if you have F prime using the 50 degree, you can get FC using the cosine and FX using the sine. So you have FX equals F prime sine 50. And since you already have F prime here, well, you have 500 sine 40, sine 50. And you can get now Fc as F prime cosine 50, right? And you already have F prime as 500 sine 40 times cos 40, cos 50, right? And then this is another question that you should memorize, is that you just look at the angles and then you take advantage of the angles to get what you need. Based on, based on this 40, you get this one, right? Oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, one thing to take care of here, fx is negative. So here, you have to be very careful, it's negative. So you have to put, to fx, you have to put a negative, uh, fx is negative because it's, you have to check that by hand, right? So this will be minus whatever because it's going in the x direction negative, right? Uh, y is positive and c is positive. So now you have the three components, fx, y, and c, okay? That's when if they are, if they are asking you the components, that's how you get them. Some other case that you have is when you have coordinates of point. Coordinates of point. Let's say that you have, let's put some kind of like. A, oh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, someone put a question in the chat. All right. F prime is the vector on the ground XC plane. The angle again is 40 connected by. So you can solve for F prime. F prime. F prime, F sine 40 or F cosine, F sine 40 or F cosine. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. You can do here F prime equals F cosine 50, right? Same thing, same thing. Instead of 40, use 50. Right, right. And, and uh, absolutely, yeah. And you just have to be able to play with the sine and cosine of angles uh, uh, around you. At this point, you have to be able to do that. No problem, that's perfect. I, uh, yeah, good. Now let's see an, uh, another kind of problem. Let's say that you have this set of axes here. And you have a point here, let's say point B and another point here, uh, D, and you have a, a, a wire that goes from B to D. Uh, let's give a little angle to that, otherwise we won't be able to see anything. Let's say this, or like this. So this is point D. And they tell you that there is a force that goes from in the direction from B to D, so this will be your force, force F from B to D. This is B, this is D. And let's put some coordinates to this stuff here. Let's say that this, two, four, three, six, six, one. let's say this is nine here. And this is 
one and this is four. Uh, let's say this is what uh, eight or whatever, right? So how do you get to decompose that force in your in your Cartesian coordinates? So the best way to do this is to wor work with the the, the um, unit vector in the direction from B to D. And then you can express this like F equals to F times lambda from B to D. That's kind of like the, the recommendation for me to, to decompose that. So the best way is because it's very organized. You go from B to D, so you get the coordinates of B, the coordinates of B, and then you subtract D minus B. So the coordinates of D will be, let's put here X, Y, C, X4. I put it with a lot of space there, Y1 and C0. And then for B, X0, mm, uh, Y9, and uh, Z8. So I subtract D minus B will be four minus zero. It will be T minus B, one minus nine. And D minus B, zero minus A. So I have the vector, the position vector from D to B will be 4i minus 8j minus 8k. The distance from D to B will be square root of 16 plus 81 plus 81. So that will be... 13.342, So then you have lambda db will be r db over 13.342. Or, or I can say a square root of 18 times two plus 16. Square root of 178, that may be is easier to write 178. And, and that way is more exact, but okay, anyway. So you can, so this will be, um, four, see I have RDB here. 4 over a square root of 178i minus 8 over 178j minus 8 over square root of 178k. So now the, the force will be equal to f times lambda pd equals to F times four over one seventy eight I minus F eight over one hundred and seventy eight J minus F eight hundred and seventy eight K. And that the force decomposed in the Cartesian components, if, if they give you the value of the four, whatever here, then you just put that value here on the F and then you have the three components. If this is the case of a force that is part of an equilibrium problem, let's say you have another force, another force over here and another force over there, and then the, there is like a, a uh, force here of 700 pounds and they say, okay, this is F2, this is F3, and this is F1. And they ask you, okay, what are the values of F2, F3, and F1? 
given the 700 force pull in there. So, so you don't have this value. So you just have to decompose this one like this. You have to do the same thing for this one, the same thing for this one, and you will have a set of, so this will be F1, 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 F1. You will do the same for F2. So you will have F2 times something here I plus F2, something here J plus F3, F2, something here K, right? And same thing for F3, and you have to decompose this 700, same thing, and this one will be a, a, a number, right? This one is known, so it's like, like when you have F and you put the number in the F, so you have numbers, you have the 700, it will be like, a, let's say to make easier our, our problem here, let's assume that this 700 force is a force that goes uh, like this, 700. How do you decompose that force 700? Let's say, let's say it's a, a force that somebody is applying the a force, let's call it P. Oh, I run out of space. Let's say there is a force P applied at that point B, a force P equals to 700. So then you will have another force here. You have F1, F2, F3 and another force P that is equal to 700. And since that 700 is in the direction of C, it will have zero component in the X direction, zero component in the Y direction, and 700 in the k direction, right? You will have here F3, some number i plus F3, some number j, F3, some number k. Do you understand what I mean when I say some number? It's because you did this whole process, as, as you did for F1, you have to do something similar to this for F2, and something similar to this for F3, in order to get all these numbers, and then you have to get all the components in the X direction and do the summation of those components in the X direction. There will be this number plus this number plus this number. So it will be, it will be, let me put it here. We had already the components for the F1. So it will be F1, that summation you have to put it equal to zero. So that summation will be F1 four over a square root of 178 plus whatever you got for F2, F2 multiply for something here, whatever you have for S3 plus F3 multiply by whatever number you found plus zero because there is no component uh, for, for the P force in that direction. So you don't need to put anything. So equals to zero. Then you have to do the same for the y direction equals to zero. So you have F1 times in the j direction, you have minus eight over 178 plus F2 for whatever number here, that will be this value here, plus F3 to this value here, some number here equals to zero. In the c direction, we have the same, some value here for F1 that we have it is this one here, right? That one over there, eight over 178, um, plus whatever you found for F2, plus whatever you found for F3, plus P, P has component here. So plus 700, and we don't need to put the K because all these, all these, all these elements are K. So you don't have to put the, the unit vectors uh, in these equations. So this equation equals to zero. Then you have three equilibrium equations. Equilibrium equation. You cannot have more than three because um, you only have three axes. And you cannot have more than three unknowns because you only have three equations. 
And then you solve them. You look to what is the, how can you replace one value in another, solve for this? Well, you know how to solve systems of equations. If I give you something like this, which I will, I try to give you uh, easy numbers and not so many components. Uh, I, like here, you have all the forces have components in the three directions. I will give you forces that have only two components in the 3D space. So that's how you do, that's how you do it. Oh my goodness, the class up to 815? Is it? Seven to 815? Yes. Look, look at the time, 815. Oh yeah, my it's God. right on time. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I hope this made some sense Look, by seeing the whole thing uh, like uh, in, 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 a, in a quick chat, you see maybe the whole picture a little from the distance and makes a little, a little more sense all the study that you have been doing these days. Uh, keep preparing for your evaluation. See you on Thursday. You can bring your Pencil, eraser, very important. You can bring a ruler, a circular protractor will be useful if you want. And an and own calculator, little calculator like this one. Hello Kitty calculators. Don't bring me those computers that can have uh, books inside and pictures and equations. No, no. If you have one of those, I, I take it and I replace it by this. Something very little like this. I got this thing, 99 cent store for, by I guess $3. It's good to have one simple like this for exams. You guys know that they, 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 they back with this at the school and it's very inexpensive uh, in, investment, but it's good to have it beforehand so you learn how to use it. You don't want to get in trouble getting the, to know your calculator in the middle of the exam and you get errors because of the calculator. All right, I'll let you guys go.